Hey everyone, a welcome to Be Our Guest, our weekly virtual happy hour with industry professionals. Uh, my name is Dev Janke. I am the artistic director of Live and in Color. Uh, we are a not-for-profit theater company uh, based both in New York and Connecticut. Our uh, mission is to develop new plays and musicals that promote and celebrate diversity. Uh, you can find out a lot more about us at uh, theater in color.org. Um, make sure to check us out because we have a lot of very cool uh, virtual programming uh, coming up. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, so now it's time. Uh, grab your cocktail, uh, start leaving questions uh, for our guest in the comments. And uh, please help me welcome uh, an incredibly talented actor, singer, dancer, director, choreographer, and songwriter. Um, he's appeared in so many Broadway shows, uh, The Color Purple, Guys and Dolls, Chicago, Aida, Beautiful, The Carol King Musical, and most recently starring in uh, Ain't Too Proud. Uh, please welcome the wonderful James Harkness. Yo. Hello, sir, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> that theme song, that got me, I was up. I was like, right? <laughs> Gets you in the mood. I am boom, 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 boom. The dancer in you, always. <laughs> Look, it's my foundation. Uh -huh. It's my foundation. And, and it took me, I'm going to tell you, it took me, my, my time in New York City for my first Broadway show, which was a dream, Aida, which is what brought me to New York. I was one of those very blessed people that came to New York with a job. And, you know, because there are a lot of people that come here to make it and, you know, they they packed up and they're just like, I'm coming to New York and I'm going to jump in and do it. And I was very blessed to come with a job. Um, but then, you know, you take that journey, right? Well, and I want to talk to you about, you I want to start at the beginning to talk about your journey. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for being here. I'm so happy to see you. It's, you know, I, it you. means the world to have you as part of this. Um, uh, first of all, are you in New York City? Are you? Are I am. you yeah. How's quarantine been treating you? Everyone okay? And you know. Yeah. Like, my family is healthy. I'm healthy. All of that has been great. And quarantine has never been, it's not an issue for me. I'm very good on my own two feet. I'm very good in my own space. I'm very good as, as a human being by myself. So being in quarantine has just been kind of an extension of, of what I kind of do when I'm done with the show anyway. You know, I'm, yeah. I get done with work. I go get some food and then I go home. You know, so um, it's been fine. Um, so you are originally from in El Paso, Texas, right? You grew I up am. there, um, and you yeah. started out as a dancer, right? Yes, I did. Talk yeah. a little bit about your your dancing before you moved into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's a that's a long conversation. But no, I started out. I started in El Paso, Texas. Um, I always danced. I didn't even know what I I knew that I was dancing, but I didn't know what it was about because I, I didn't have the luxury of taking dance classes and, and all that stuff as a kid. Like a lot of people, most of my people that I work with in this industry probably started taking dance, tap, ballet classes, jazz from the age of five and up. I didn't have that. That's not what my trajectory was. But I danced because I love to dance. Music is a huge part of my family. Mm -hmm. um, and then high school rolls around and there was a dance team and I auditioned for the dance team after I begged my mom to let me audition for the dance team. I was a gymnast at the time. And she finally let me do that and my whole world changed. My entire world changed because dancing, like I used to watch stuff on TV and learn the steps from, from television. That's, that was how I learned. And I still <laughs> kind of learn things that way <laughs> as a lot of us are now. Um, so that's what introduced dance into my life. And then I got to just do so many incredible things. Um, from high school, I was in the military, and then from the military, I landed, through the military, I landed in San Diego, and I found a dance studio randomly, walking around the streets one night, and the name Stage 7 was up on, on this uh, little, you know, signage uh, outside of this building, and I was like, I have no idea what this is, but my spirit is telling me it says stage. So yeah. it's got to be something with the arts. So yeah. I came back the next day after I got off my ship and I walked up the stairs. And when I tell this story, it's kind of funny because 
you, it was two flights of stairs. So you know, you're at the bottom of the stairs. You can't see anything. Uh -huh. I didn't really hear anything until I got to the landing of the first. And then I got up to the next. And as my as I crested, I saw, I heard music and I saw dancers stretching. And it was very much like that kind at of the ballet. Scene. Of course, I dance and and at the ballet. Yeah, so it's yeah. Just like, up the steep and very narrow stairs. Oh, totally. <laughs> and uh, and I found this home, something yeah. that I had not felt since I was in dance classes at Bel Air High School, with all of these really cool people that I was that I was able to be around. I think that's for many of us dancers, that's really an essential part of it. It's where we, you know, felt our most ourselves and definitely the most at home. So talk a little bit about your trajectory and how you, your path to the Broadway. I know there's some stories that go along with that. So, <laughs> You know, well, here, here's the thing is, uh, so going back to the fact that I didn't start off in dance classes, nor yeah. did I start off, I never studied musical theater. So there was no trajectory to Broadway. That was never a goal. That was never even something that I knew existed to be. Mm -hmm. I just was blessed enough to be in this business, something that I love doing. I love to dance. I love to sing. I love to make up steps. I used to make up steps, which I found out later was choreographing. Um, for <laughs> I used to do it for the cheerleaders in our, on our high school cheerleading team. I, I helped them choreograph a couple of their winning routines because I was always hanging out with them. So that was, I just did what I enjoy doing. And um, that is what has brought me to where I am. So, you know, I started out in LA trying to make it in LA. I wanted to do music videos. I was hoping to do movies, like all of the things that those brilliant LA dancers get to do. And I never did it. I, it just never happened for me. Um, and uh, my time in LA was really cool, but it was not what I thought it might be. And it was very hard. It's hard when you go there as a youth and you're, you're excited and, and you audition 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 and it, it doesn't quite go your way. Though I did do some really cool stuff. I worked with an amazing recording artist named Cheyenne. That was my first Oh yeah, job. Right, Cheyenne. Yeah, and che Cheyenne is amazing. He's still yeah. out there doing like yeah. it, it's, it's incredible what he's doing. That was my first job with working with the amazing choreographer Jerry Evans, who used to choreograph for Paula Abdul. Jerry did so many amazing stuff. So that was my introduction into the business. But and so, how did you get to New York? I want to get. I want you to get to New York. Well, the thing is, I have to. You have to go through these journeys. Yeah, right? yeah. So from 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 Los Angeles. I ended up getting a job that took me to Las Vegas. And while I was in Las Thanks. Vegas, I was working with some incredible people. Then my, you know, Michael Balderrama, correct? Yes, of course. So Michael Balderrama and I were in a show together at the Las Vegas Hilton with recording artist Christine W. If you don't know who she is, you should know who she is. Michael then left Vegas and he got Broadway and he was doing Saturday Night Fever on Broadway. And so he set up an audition for me for Saturday Night Fever. So I flew down to Vegas to audition for Saturday Night Fever. I booked Saturday Night Fever at the same time that I was work and I was doing a show in Reno at the time. So while I was trying to figure out how to find someone to replace me in that show, because I was one of the main features in that show, the casting company called me back up and they said, hey, while we're trying to figure out Saturday Night Fever for you, we have another audition that we'd like you to come on. And it was for Aida. And I was like, okay, great. So I flew to Los Angeles and I had my audition for Aida, which is still one of my favorite auditions that I had ever had in my life. Wayne Salento. Oh, just, it was an incredible experience. Um, and I ended up also booking Aida. So I booked Saturday Night Fever and I booked Aida all within the span of, I'd say a month or so. And I was, that was how I got to New York. Saturday Night Fever fell through because they needed me right away and I wasn't able to get out of my job. But Aida is what came through and that's how I got to New York City into this world that I really truly didn't know anything about. And you have never looked back. I mean, uh, your career is just unbelievable. Um, oh. I wanna talk a little bit about, well, before we get to all that, we uh, got the, to work together back in 2001 um, in the infamous Dream Girls concert that benefited the Actors Fund, which starred Audra McDonald and Heather Headley and Elias White. 
it was sort of an amazing, amazing event that both of us, I know, you know, we have a very a mutual obsession for Dream Girls. I mean, you got to do the national tour, and it was one of these these moments that really was extraordinary. And uh, it, extraordinary. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything about Dream Girls. Well, and now, and now you are an aficionado of Dream Girls. And actually, <laughs> I want to I want to play a little clip that's gone a little viral. Mama said I am special. She said I've got to prove I am just as good. I'm even better than. That's what she would That's say. That's what she would say. Shine, 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 and you're gonna shine. You are my dream. That's amazing. First of all, for people who don't know, that's the amazing Cheryl Lee Ralph, the original Dina from Dream Girls. You need to talk about that moment because it was it was epic. I'm sorry, uh, I wasn't actually expecting. Oh <laughs> shit! I'm so sorry. No, um, I, I I feel the same way. I mean, you know, Dream Girls, you know, is the gift that keeps on giving, and for so many of us, it's, oh, it's baby, man, it's deep. look, Cheryl Lee Ralph is an incredible woman. That that moment in particular, yes, I've had, once I found out what Dream Girls was from that concert that we did, and that night blew me, it blew my hair back. Whatever I had, hair was back. And uh, then my journey with Dream Girls happened, and I've met Cheryl Lee. I was blessed to do the 25th anniversary concert down in Atlanta with Dream Girls, uh, when Jennifer Holliday reprised yeah. her role. And I was a cover for Curtis, and, um, so and I've had I've been a cover for Curtis every time I've done a version of the show and I've been a cover for Curtis. So Cheryl Lee's coming in and out of my life a few times. That night, uh, uh, that afternoon, she came to see Ain't Too Proud in Los Angeles. So I, I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go up to her and just have a little moment and say hello again. But I'm gonna just gonna go and say, when I first saw you, I said, oh my, and then we were gonna be like, ha ha ha, nice to see you. I started singing. And she stopped and she just, she looked at me and she smiled and that kind of smile like, okay, this is, this is happening. And then, but I, and I kept singing, then something in her face shifted. And when I saw that shift in her face, I kept singing. That's and I originally had, I was holding the camera and then I handed it to my friend because I was like, this needs to keep going. Yeah. So he took the camera from me and I kept singing and then she started singing back to me and I was not prepared for that at all. Uh -huh. And at that moment when she started singing back to me and I'm, I shit you not, sorry, we're adults, we're having cocktails, right? Yeah, so, yeah of course. <laughs> so everything around her blurred. I could see people behind her, but everything, only person I really could see was her. She became Dina. And I became Curtis. I, I am so in honor of her allowing that moment to happen because she could not have allowed it. She could have cut that moment off at any time she chose. Well, I think, you know, she probably, I'm having seen your performance too, probably was inspired by you. So it, it, it really is like, I, I, I'm so, uh, happy that moment happened for you. You know, yeah. so, so many of us are, are dream girls ner nerds, dream of that moment. <laughs> well, it was it was incredible. And, and we've since become closer friends and had chances to talk. And, um, and to her, for her to say thank you to me. Yeah. For that moment. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, now now it's all over the internet for people Ooh, to, to see. <laughs> I can't believe um, you did that to me. Well, <laughs> well I, I want to just shift gears a little bit. Last yeah. year, you flew to Australia to film with the children's group, The Wiggles. Um, uh, uh, how did that come about? Uh, we were in Toronto yeah. and came out to do the show. We're like, the way she smiles so bright. Those are the words. Those are the original words. So yeah. you got to smile so bright. Da, 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 da. And then I'm like, we have this moment in the show where we, once we hit a step and we hit a step like this and I hit the step and as my head went this way, I saw this group of men sitting in the front row in tartan. They were like done. 
Lockie had this, he had this beret on that was tartan and they had tartan and stuff. And I was like, I don't know who these guys are, but they were, they were like this for the whole show. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't know who these guys are, but the energy that they were giving, I had to respond to. They then posted this picture online and tagged Ain't Too Proud. Of There's the original picture that we have of us where we're all standing in line like this. So there's six of them standing in line mimicking our post. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Anto started following me, Anthony started following me online, and I followed him back. I looked in to see what the Wiggles was about, and I was like, I don't really understand it, but I just saw massive massive amounts of kids and families and these people on stage singing these really fun songs to kids huge huge thing and i was like cool that's fun as time went on anthony started like commenting on my post and this and that so we started doing this back and forth thing and then one day when i was back home in texas right before we were coming to broadway after toronto before broadway and uh he sends me this message he's like hey i have an idea uh would you be interested in coming to Australia. And I was like, absolutely, I want to come to Australia. And he explained everything to me. And I really honestly didn't think that it was going to come through. You know how this business works. Yeah, totally. People have like these big ideas and they toss these ideas out and then they never come to fruition for whatever reason. And but next thing you end up in days, Australia. <laughs> in Australia. Well, hold on. Wait, on I'm, going to show a little, I'm going to show a little clip of what you ended up doing in Australia. James is my name, I love music and food. I'm the Wiggles Town Cool Restaurant Dude. It's fun to eat and dance and sing. At the James Cafe, we groove that thing. Best food in town, they say. You know me love at the James Cafe. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I, I know that a, 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 um, this sort of came out of a conversation with Anthony Field where he wanted to, he had a desire to bring more diversity and representation to the Wiggles. Yes. Can you talk a little yes. bit about that? Yeah, well, when, when they picked me up at the airport, we were driving in his car to go start filming. And uh, that was one of the things he was like, I really want to, I want little kids from my country to see other people that don't look like they look. They've been looking at the Wiggles for years and years and years. And, and we mm -hmm. have primarily been white, even though uh, I think they had a, um, an Asian character in the beginning. I can't remember if he was Japanese or Chinese, uh, one of the first guys that were part of the Wiggles. But since then, they haven't had much diversity within their original ranks, though they bring in dancers from time to time that are of different races. And But he really wanted to make a statement by bringing in an African-American because that was also reaching across the pond. And and there's they have so many more plans on ways to bring inclusivity into what these what kids are used to looking at so that it's just like there is all types in the world and we should be used to that we should be accepting of that and that you know it's so important with starting with the young folk right well, setting that example kid, well and kids the thing is kids already start that way you know yeah. we know that kids don't see that kind of stuff until they get older and that comes through education, the way that they, they are taught, either sometimes verbally and sometimes it's just by behavior. Yeah. So it's I think it what Anthony wants to do is to keep that thing that we all have when we are kids and for it not to go away as we get older. That's so wonderful. So we have to talk about Ain't Too Proud, which, you know, please, you, you please started, please. you know, you there, there you are. And the, the, um, you know, you started out in the ensemble of many, many Broadway shows, and this marks your Broadway principal debut, which is just incredible. You play Paul Williams, um, and you give such an extraordinary performance. I, I, I got to see it right before we went to lockdown, and I was just so moved and inspired. And I, you. Just knowing you, I was took, you know, I was just so proud to know you. Um, Thank you. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, how does it feel to be a superstar on Broadway? <laughs> well, for, for <laughs> First of all, that word superstar, uh, here's what I say. You know, we, 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 we use that word, we use the word star and superstar a lot. Yeah. And I've worked with superstars. I know what a star is. I know what a superstar is. I count myself, and I mean this when I say this, I count myself blessed to be an actor in this business and blessed to be an actor on the Broadway stage. That well, you, is, that and, is but you've worked so hard for so many years to get this and it's so deserving. And, and, 
And I appreciate that. And I'm grateful. I love everything I've done. I would not be standing where I'm standing now without every Broadway show, every regional thing, every workshop. I would not be standing where I am without all of those experiences because I needed all of those things to get me to the point that I am now. Yeah. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the show. It is one of the most beautiful things that I have been a part of. And I've been a part of some really beautiful things. Um, so it is an absolute blessing in my life. Well, I have to say, like, you have an amazing uh, 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 team of people. And, and we actually have another cast member here who misses you dearly, no, who wants to no, say no. hello. No, we don't. Uh, yes, we I do. I do miss you, baby. It's Jelani Ray, who plays I Eddie Kendricks in Ain't Too Proud. Yay! <laughs> Hi, James. Hey, Hi, Jelani, everybody. how you doing? Better now. <laughs> Better now. We want to bring one of your good friends on here. Hi, Jelani, how are you? I am doing so well. I'm loving seeing James in the Wiggles. I'm loving this moment, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. Oh, it's so good to have you. Um, I want to talk to you both a little bit. So Ain't Too Proud was one of the show, many shows that was shut down because of the COVID-19, as most shows did. What was the energy like during that time backstage when everything was sort of coming to a head? Well, here's the deal. Was I was fine. on vacation. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, and true, Jelani was away. He, okay. was, he was out of the country. Um, so it was fine. You know what I mean? Like, a part of the, the, the temperature of our show, it, it, is, it is a place of love. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So this, all this stuff, it really kind of came out of nowhere in, in a way. So it wasn't until the announcement happened that it was just like, oh, you know what I mean? It, it yeah. wasn't anything that was building up over this time. There was no stress or anything like that. And once it did happen, it was just like, okay, well, this is what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? This yeah. is the best thing for our industry, not only for those of us on stage and backstage and all of that, but it's the best thing for our audiences that are coming into our buildings. If this is what we need to do, then this is what we need to do. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, you know, I hopefully the show will be back up and running very soon because everyone needs to go see it. It's just so, so great. You 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 were all uh, nominated for a 2020 Grammy Award for Best Musical Theater <laughs> Album, which is just amazing. What, what does that feel like? I have to it say, feels I'm riding, like everything. I'm, riding I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm <laughs> riding the coattails because I wasn't on the original, but I am totally basking in all the glory <laughs> that they did. But James, that's definitely a question for you. It is everything. It from from someone who, as I as I started getting older in this business and and really started to explore the things that I wanted to do in this business, being nominated for a Grammy, winning a Grammy, having a gold record or twelve on my wall is something that I have seen in my head. For it to for my first nomination to happen within this vehicle with these incredible people that I have gotten to share this journey with. It's it's it doesn't for me it doesn't get better than that if that's the way that I get to be introduced and have this thing happen in my life it's incredible. It, it's it really does sound like a a big love fest over there. Um, you know, as, <laughs> as, as 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 we we know, um, you know, there's a serious need for more black stories to be told on Broadway, and Ain't Too Proud is doing exactly that. Um, it must be so joyous for you all to to be bringing this represent representation to Broadway. How does that feel and wh what does that mean to you just in terms of the world we're living in right now? <laughs> you can talk on that, Jelani. Yeah, well, I think that it is more so amplified in a show that we're doing now because it's literally verbatim. What we say in the show is what's happening on TV. So it's yeah. so incredible how vital and how informative and how real it is for our show. So I, like. I always tell people the second we get back to be able to to tell our story, that those those scenes in particular are going to be that much more real and have that much more you know truth behind it because it's literally history repeating itself. Mm -hmm. So what a blessing to be part of a show that is time well blessing and sort of like sobering to be part of a show that is literally happening as we speak, you know Absolutely. that has such relevance. Yeah, Absolutely. and it, the thing that's been beautiful about it, we've been working on. Ain't too proud since 2017. So yeah. there have been times with this show since its inception and, and the first show that we did at the Berkeley Rep through now where it has been relevant. 
because as we know, what we're dealing with right now, yes, it is at a head that is that has blown open, but that boiling has been happening over decades. This is nothing brand new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as we have been telling this story, these things have been popping anyway. I met a man in Berkeley, one of the beauties of telling this story, um, who he was like, oh, you're an ain't too proud. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, let me, I have to tell you what a, what a great thing it was for me to sit and watch this story. Cause he was like, he's a white male. He's like, I grew up in that, in the sixties. I experienced all of that on this side of the table. And he was like, and I never thought about what it was like on this side of the table until I saw your show. And he was mm-hmm. like that scene on the bus. He was like, I yeah. never had to think about it from a white male perspective until I saw that, until I saw that. And that mm-hmm. is one of the things that has been so powerful about this show that has happened time and time again with people, both of color and not of color. There are moments in the show that 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 hit them because they understand the importance of it. And that's one of the, the most beautiful things about the show. And yes, as Jelani says, and now we're in this time where yeah. everyone is seeing black people getting beaten, getting killed, getting unfairly, all, all sorts of things that they're watching all of this happen. And we we touch on that in the show. Yeah. And so it is going to pop even more so than ever before. And it's a blessing. Yeah. It really is a blessing because these things need to be talked about. And fortunately now they are being talked about. Absolutely. Can I also say, can I also say that uh, in another note, musically, that the Temptations brought every color to the dance floor. You know what I mean? yeah. their music, and they brought so many different people and expressed so many people's different views through their music. So to be able to be part of a show that relives people's childhood and upbringing and and unity mm-hmm. is a privilege, you know. And it's it's so nice to be part of a show that a lets people relive that, but b lets a whole new generation experience that and get that flavor and culture that is so prominent, you know, and so yeah. foundation, sounds so like foundational to, to, to music, you know, it's really, they really paved the way for so many artists to, to, to sing and to be seen and to be heard and to express themselves. Yeah, artists that's, and yeah. people. So wonderful. Um, so, you know, our mission at Live and in Color is to connect diverse communities to create new stage works. Um, for the two of you, either of you, um, what does having a diverse working environment mean to you? Well, it means also everything because we live in a diverse world. So why shouldn't our work environment represent the very world that we live in? Mm. Period. Yeah. We don't live in a country anymore that is that, and frankly, we never really have. But our, our country is not white with a sprinkling of other ethnicities. Yeah, Our country is every ethnicity that migrated to this country. So we should be working in environments that represent everyday life. It shouldn't be that difficult. And so these mm-hmm. stories that are being told, we, we, we live them. So how, why is it so difficult for them to be told? And I'm glad that we're having these conversations right now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. every everyone should be represented. And it doesn't have to be, I'm, I'm sorry to keep talking, but, and it also doesn't have to be a black story. And some other people may may disagree with me on that. But by that, I mean, my, my experience as a black person is not the same as Jelani's experience as a black person. Absolutely. But also, we live in everyday life. So a story is a story that can be told with a black lead with it, it should be able to be told with anyone it's just a story and yeah. but that has black representation so that you can sit in the audience and go yeah i understand that and i see that person and i feel that and and i can identify with that but it's not just because you're seeing someone that is white and you're white or you're seeing someone that is black and you're black but in this time though it is very important to have people of color represented in theater because we have not really truly been represented. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I can add to that a little bit in this analogy that I just thought of because of James, but it's like, if we are the limbs that move this body of theater and, and 
and the head and, and the arms. What is the spine though? Like, what is it built on? I think that needs to shift and that needs to really accept every piece that is important to this puzzle and give everybody an equal share. That's, that's so beautifully said. Um, uh, we, I think we have some uh, questions from our viewers. Oh, Dylan64 says, based on all your experiences in the industry, what advice would you give to a young artist starting out? I just say this all the time is you learn everything that you can learn. Keep, be open to learning everything and strive in each avenue. If you if you know you're a strong actor, of course, keep working in that direction, but also be the best singer that you know how to be, be the best dancer that you know how to be, and be open to so many other things that are aspects of this business. You can't go through this business like this. Um, and the other thing is just don't give up. It's not mm -hmm. the easiest business to be in, but it's incredibly rewarding because if you're doing something that you love, it makes it all worthwhile. But I just always say, don't give up. Stay, stay on your goals, stay striving ahead, and those doors will open up for you. I have wanted to be a lead in a show once I understood what the musical was. It's something that I've had a dream of. It took me 18 years for that to happen. And it's been worth every all of those steps along the way. So that's my advice. I love it. So great. I love all that. I love all that and all things James Harkness. <laughs> and, um, it's hard to swallow, but what makes you you is what makes you you. And be you. There's something about everybody's uniqueness and individuality that is important. You know. So once you tap into being yourself and not being a carbon copy or or loving your uniqueness and quirkiness and 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 isms and and using that towards your craft figuring out who you are that is when i think doors will open up and you will be more satisfied in the work that you do and it'll be that much more gratifying that's so 100 percent. i agree Let's, with that i, I think I, we have time I, for one more question Alyssa says what is your go-to karaoke song oh my gosh bills 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 destiny's child <laughs> Old school. What about you? <laughs> I, I don't I don't do karaoke. Honestly. Oh come on. You've never oh, I don't. Come on. I don't. You know why? Because don't. James writes his own songs. That's why. Well yeah. He's, no. yeah he writes no. he's he's he's, it, he's his own entity. It's not it's not because of that. Um <laughs> I'll be one hundred percent truthful what it, why I don't do karaoke is because I have struggled for a long time with my voice and accepting my voice as a singer. So and times that I have gone to do or see people do karaoke, it's people who know they can sing. So they're up there wailing da, da, or you have the people who just do it because they love it. Well that's yeah, I, that's why you should do it. Be quiet, Jelani. I'm telling my story. Um, so, <laughs> so that's that's the reason that I've never really done karaoke because I'm never I'm not I have never been confident enough in my singing voice to do that. And now that I'm in a place where I'm doing what I'm doing, karaoke, I, I it'll happen. It will happen right. one day. How about that? Cut to Jelani's birthday party, 2020. James Harkness will but not at Jelani's birthday party. Yes, you will, baby. Yes, you will. <laughs> Uh, we are almost out of time. I could talk to both of you all day. Um, but before we go, I want to say uh, uh, that I'm so proud of what Live and Color does and the work we do. Uh, we foster inclusive environments that create platforms that showcase underrepresented voices. I really believe the stories we tell change hearts and minds. Um, for our viewers, if you can, please consider making a donation to theaterandcolor.org to support our work and our artists. Also, be sure to tune in next week to be our guest when I will be talking to the star of In the Heights, The Nance, On Your oh, Feet, cool. the fabulous Andrea Burns. It promises oh. to be a great show. And thank you to all our viewers who tuned in today. And thank you, James and Jelani, for joining me. Uh, uh, James, would you give a little toast before we go? <laughs> um, so this will be my very first toast ever. Um, I just say to everyone, as you're going through life, to lead with love. Lead that with love. That's something that I, I, I really believe in. So lead with love. Lead with love. Thank you so much. Thank you to our viewers. Have a great evening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Same.